select board meeting of Monday, December 4th. It's actually 631. Uh, Michael is not joining us tonight. Um, and so the first item on the agenda are two sets of minutes. Jody, how are you? You okay with that? Um, there was a spelling error. He just felt quite wrong. Yes, I corrected that. Other than that, I was fine with it. Okay. And so. small, I was objected to the sweeper because I thought that was incorrect because I thought, oh, that's sweeper. But we do have a sweeper. So. All right, so we're good with those. All right, community input. Her, well, I'm sorry, this gentleman, you were here. What can we help you with? Um. I just wanted to talk to the board about a letter I had gotten in the mail about, uh, I think I uh, forgot to get a permit for my driveway getting paid. I just wanted to rectify the situation with you guys. Perfect. We can do that now. We can do it after the meeting. It's fine. Whatever you guys put. I would prefer that you, all you need to do is come back uh, when the town hall is open, get a building permit. Okay. And just fill it out as it, it was. It was, a it was a weird situation because um, it was supposed to be done when the house was built. And I had made an agreement with the guy. He couldn't. He couldn't come out and do it at the time. And it's been a while. It's been like almost a year and a half. But he gave it to us a lot cheaper. He said, "Hey, I'll come out and do it when I can." And he called me. He's like, "Oh, I can come out tomorrow and do it. Do you mind if I come?" I'm like, "Sure. I, I don't know." So I just, I just didn't really understand how it all worked. So I just, I just don't want you know any issues. Yes. Well, just come in and fill out a building permit, and everything will be square with the town. Your name, please. Uh, Brett Matthews. And location? Uh, 720 Portland Ave, the red house on Route 4. Is that the new, that's the new house? Yeah. 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 That just sort of just fits? Just okay. fits perfectly. Just fits, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the building permit states it's like 10 bucks per thousand. Like, do you want me to just come up with an estimate? Call Our building, you, you can do your own estimate. Okay. Our, co our um, housing inspector. Oh, the guy, okay, I know him. He'll, yeah. yeah, Tom Clark, he'll, okay. he'll look at it and say whatever, however long it is, and he'll Got oh. an estimate. So there's a $25 just basic fee, then plus uh, $10 per, per okay. thousand. Per can, I, can I get the form online, or do I have to come back in here and get it? It is online? Is it online? I believe it is. Can we, can we, well, let me, can we, yeah, somebody give me a key. Can I just get one now? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be a good thing. It has to be a lot of houses are for sale there now, huh? A lot, a lot. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. We drove by and I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Are we ready to move on? Of course, the Janato's house has been up for a while. Yeah, he's going for the home run. <laughs> go big or go home. Uh, well, all it takes is one person who wants a house. It's amazing how many folks just want to sell on it. Am I buying or going? Oh my, oh my. Uh, no, right now. The house is selling. Oh, not there, they're not. Well, my, my friend's house in Dover, they put it on the market. They went and got six show in three days and sold it for cash. Less oh, it must have been a good price. Where was this? Uh -huh. I thought it was all straight. Dover. In Dover. The housing market is a little nice. Well, yeah. our three houses on our road haven't budged. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do believe you can get it online because we've had building permits come in through the mail. Possibly. They, do they, have a, they don't have a number, right? And then they had yeah, assign a number, number when they come in. Did you assign a number? Uh, okay. Did you assign a number? This one, oh, this one is in the books. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it's not electronically, but it's written. Okay. Yeah, I'm here to uh, request the town to formally invite the state DOT, specifically Mr. Lambert and Dugas, um, to come and start the process for reviewing the safety aspects of Route 4. So I spoke to Mr. Dugas, He's, he said invite him, but Lambert is the the key guy. That, the, per, the same person we had the yeah, last time. same guy. He remembered, Mr. Dugas remembered the whole case. There's another gentleman from the state that's in a separate division of safety, not design safety, but just safety in general, and he's the next uh, state trooper. So I spoke to him at length 
last week, and he wants. I, so I'll personally, there's a couple folks I'm going to personally invite that I should let you know in advance. Him and uh, uh, Senator Waters. Absolutely. So, Jody, are you familiar with the what? I, I saw the email that her sent us, and I do know that there was, um, that wanted to do something a few years ago prior to me, and then um, I did see, I forwarded him the link that we got last week saying any public comments, because they're going to be having a public hearing um, to see if that helped. Yeah. Um, and then, so, and then I heard what happened to your son, so I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, you know, yeah. we, we kind of saw it coming, but I didn't think it was going to so be. So terribly. I didn't think that was going to be the family exactly. affected. Exactly. But, um, and you were the one who brought this to us in 2013. You know, it's um, just, it, probably because, but you, you recall, there's a lot of folks that showed up. Sure. Pretty much everyone who lives on Route 4 is of the same, you know, sentiment. Yeah. Um, you know, the problem with the state at the time was they were just mostly concerned about the safety of Route 4 itself and the ability to, to, to drive it at 50 miles an hour, which we never argued. You know, were there not 30 driveways crossing it, it would be perfectly safe. But mm -hmm. uh, over the years, what's become, you know, a state highway has become a town road, basically. So I, I, you know, I really feel bad for the folks who have to get onto that road or get off it. It's, I don't know how you do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, they're... You know, there are two of us right, right yeah. here tonight who are coming up from the just, It is and just treacherous. Yeah. And the school buses oh. have to use it every single day because they pick up at Garrison. So I don't know if you call also not to belabor it, but, two, but four years ago, the you know, Chief Rutherford was mildly concerned, but not really. And Chief, Chief Ducharme brought in the statistical data that showed there weren't a lot of accidents, um, which I respect, but. He, it isn't the probability, it's the severity should one occur. Mm -hmm. That's really going to change folks' yes. minds. So, so there's been a lot of accidents on Route 4 last uh, eight months, Bear Road, the intersection. It's all relative, there. right? It's relative to other troubling um, intersections, you I know guess, what yeah. I mean? So statistically, it's, it's not, um, although there's been a few since we had that, that review done. Um, it isn't so much the like I said, the frequency, it's the severity should one happen. Yeah. Somebody who gets hit from the side coming out, it's all over. You're never going to look through an accident like that. Um, my son was fortunate. He, he, he swerved and avoided a head-on collision. And over, it would have been fatal. Um, but I just would hate to see another family go through what we're going through, and for no reason. Yeah. You know, and and the, the pros to keeping the speed up and... I, I, you know, last time I calculated the difference in five miles an hour was 17 seconds from South Borough to Dover. So it isn't like a major commuting highway where people are losing, you know, valuable commuting time every day. It, there was no negatives to lowering the speed limit, and the, but the state was just dug in. They were not uh, at all convinced. So maybe this time Mr. Lambert will get to sit down and uh, rethink it. And, uh, we'll implore him to go out and drive it himself, which he kind of did last time, but I don't think you really got a sense for it. I think what you need to do as well is come in from some of the intersections. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's not just Portland Avenue. You right. have to come in from like a Bear Road or mm -hmm. sure. Kinch Sligo. Road or sure. uh, Sligo and try to take a left. Right. You can um, try turning into my driveway. Into at five, driveway. Five, 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 People come and that. That's the yeah. scariest yeah. part of the I mean, when, I go, when I leave here at night on Monday nights, because I, I live on Portland Avenue, I have to take a left into my driveway, you know, when I'm heading home. Yeah. And so if there's somebody that's anywhere near behind me, I'll go to Taylor Rental, sure. turn, around, turn around, and yep. come back so yep. I can take a right hand that's turn into my driveway. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, we'll see. Uh, this guy Dugas seemed a little more uh, amenable. He, he was fully familiar with the case. He remembered everything about it. Um, and this guy Marasco is a real advocate of, of not letting design drive safety. He's an advocate of the other way around. You know? okay. So, um, so, her, so, so I would appreciate that meeting and uh, I'll invite some neighbors and, and anyone else who has concerns. Yes, I think the only thing that, that maybe that comes to mind is, do we want this as a public hearing or can it, should it, is it better to have them address the board and it would be a board meeting to which the public is here and then we can sort of open it up for public comments. Uh, if I were you, I would say the latter. Yeah, okay. We don't need a lot of anger and emotion. Mm -hmm. We just need him to to, right. to, re, to really reevaluate it. Um, so, so he would. They, I, wasn't, I wasn't privy to the, to the first idea that 
was there an idea to put in the light? Because well, I yeah, what was the light. original? That was a that was the that was a bridge too far. I mean, lowering the speed limit was enough of a, uh, and I don't know why they subsequently lowered it. It was two years later, and I don't know if anything. They it took that long. Our... It took that long for okay. the test to happen and the cool. you know analysis to take place, but it was but, a direct result. But they oh. were no one wanted to talk about a light. It wasn't even you couldn't even mention it. He, he was adamant that it was not necessary. Um, maybe uh -huh. it would be, it I don't, would be different this time. I don't quite remember it that way. But you couldn't even broach the subject. He, well, what he, he said showed was showed a scientific data that had to do with total traffic flow. We should, as a town, request a traffic calming techniques right. from the state. Right. And so just so you know, we have in fact done that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's on the 10-year road plan. Okay. But we are there competing with Dover, sure. Summersworth, Rochester, sure. Durham, slash UNH. Yep. Yep. And so it, it, it doesn't get any play. It's not like, you know, a major, it just doesn't get the same kind of play. Sure. So I think it's good to revisit this again. And I'm hearing that the board is is in favor of that. So I think maybe Jody, how does this sound? And, and Herb, I, I'm looking for you some input from you. Is we sort of we'll do our regular meeting and maybe do seven. Invite them to be here for seven, and then make sure that the public knows that they're here for seven. And then depending on how it goes, we can you know we can see if, if there's any public that wants to speak. I mean, I will certainly. Along with our state senator, do you want to invite our state reps as well? That would I would leave up to you. I don't know them that well, um, but David remembered the meeting four years ago, um, and he was an advocate. So yeah, if, if there's anyone from the town who has an opinion for or against um, this, I would certainly want to hear from them. So sure, who is or the, any of our state reps, absolutely. Who is the person who? Because uh, you, I know that you've been doing some conversing with with the state. So we're going to have to, you know, anchor a date mm -hmm. and then let it be published. I mean, is it, I assume it's Bill. It's whenever Bill can be. Bill's the key guy. Yeah. He's the key guy. Okay, so I'll be in touch with Bill. Okay, good. We'll try to get him for a Monday, um, 7 o'clock. As soon as we do, we'll let you know, and then you can let me know who else you're going to invite, and we'll, we'll or if you want us to make the invitation, whatever. I'll invite the two gentlemen I said, because okay. I've already said it in a dialogue already, right. but, but uh, would it be wise to have other state-related officials, sure, you, you, you guys know them better than I do. Yeah, we can always send out And we'll make sure that our chief police, our fire chief, our road agent are also here for that particular That'd discussion. That'd be great. So, Thank you. I suggest that you invite them both. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a soft, that's a, yeah, that's just paving. Yeah. That's road surface. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do you want to do something like that you guys have? It was this. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. All right, so the board is obviously be, uh, in agreement. We'll get started on it. We'll keep you posted. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. our best wishes. Yeah. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, any other community input? All right. Department heads? Here. I probably just need to go and put the rest of the inspection and work on the trucks and inspection time. It was uh, 580, but we had already submitted one for 150 to approve for the inspectors. This is for the rest of the work. So we were short this amount of money? Yes. Okay. Move to accept purchase order 986 to the city of Dover for truck repairs and inspections um, for a total of $430.62. I'll second. Yeah, because this was already signed. Well, this is already signed. So, so this okay. is an additional. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you mean, right? Yeah. All right, so I, I seconded it. Yep. Um, right, so it's for this. That's the amount you just said, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. $430.62. Thank you. 
you have interest in helping us plow. You need that list. That's just, that, I don't believe that here, but there's a few others on the bottom that would put me in here. Okay. I don't know. So, normally, we... Both of these were last two employee three. ed, right? Yeah. So it's really these, these last three. Would be these last three. So normally, what we like to do is a background check. Yeah. And but I, I think that that and they still need a just to build a job application card. So we have something in the file because they're going to create a file if we I'll use call, them at all. So it check it with Caroline. Uh, Chris Barak, we have that. We interview. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, that's the one. Yeah. We do a background check. Yeah. No, we wouldn't have. We would have only done it on the course of the work. Yeah, so he was the second one we interviewed, so, okay. Yeah, so uh, check with Caroline about an application and okay. a background check, and, and we're good. This is a nice list. Looks like, yeah, super. Yeah. Oops, you got it? As you know, by the email, I uh, attended the Green Plow, I mean, Green Snow Plow. Green Snow plow. Pro. Yes, Green Snow green Pro. Snow pro. <laughs> and it was very informative meeting, uh, or class. And I did notice that we do not have a road temperature sensing monitor to go on our trucks. And this is all based on road temperature, not at the end. I mean, that'd be a potential temperature. And I was wondering if we had the money to purchase one, I'd like to get one for the trust at least to get an eye on the road temps and knowing how much salt we should be putting down or if we should be putting any salt down with the temperature. Right. So, George, you don't have a purchase order? I have one I can make out, but I don't have, I want to check with a couple other dealers. The price fluctuated so much between dealers, so I want to check on Roughly, what, what are we looking, looking at? Looking around six to seven hundred dollars. So, so there is, uh, we know that there's money in the, uh, the the contract we did for the chipping. That line has just seven hundred dollars. I talked to them today. They're going to try to get in before the holidays. So, yeah. Yes, that, that would be good. Otherwise, it's going to come out of next year's budget. Right. right. So, <laughs> that would not be so good. He said he's going to try to get his plan before the end of the season. Okay. Um, um. Yeah, I, I saw your email after your class. One of the important things that I think the public needs to know is that with a room temperature sensor, um, it would um, possibly decrease our budget by how much? Not, not with just a room temperature sensor. There's right. Other, There's other, other things other we have factors. to do to get the usage of the salt down, and that's like either pre-wetting or pre-treating the right. rooms. That's something else altogether. It's a system that can be built inexpensively. We went over today and looked at those, and of course, I was going to be downsized considerably. <laughs> but uh, it's it's making brine using our own salt. I'm just going to ask you. So we could do we could make the brine ourselves. Right. It's, it's just it's just adding water to it, but it to a certain percentage, and it makes the salt activate faster. Mm -hmm. And by pre-treating the roads, it's like they use in class, they have a frying pan, and you spray Pam in it, it stops the stuff from sticking. And it keeps the work, it keeps the ice from forming on the roads. It's got to be done, again, you've got to pay attention to the temperature. If it's 15 degrees, there's time you're not going to be using this. But there's, you know, there's ways of getting this down, and they, an actual savings about the 50%. So, which is significant, because our salt budget is, is Currently around thirty thousand. It's not going to be thirty thousand next year because of the cost of salt has, has gone down. But nonetheless, we're we're not talking about a small budget. So, and I we I, I I like to be careful about those kinds of things where we really don't know how much we can save. But clearly, it's to our advantage to put in I, practice I, I some yeah. of these uh, yeah. uh, techniques that you you were learning. And I know, you know, Michael Point is the one who first alerted the town to green. Snow Pro, because he sends all of his folks to that. The guys the class was or led more for people. landscapers than I, I attended. However, there's a lot of landscapers out there that are putting a lot of salt out and contaminating a lot of ponds and 
Yes, exactly. And again, it happens with towns and cities, too. They say if your roads are white at the end of the snowstorm, you're using too much snow. So it can be controlled a lot easier by not putting down as much and still getting the same results. Yeah. So I'm delighted that you went. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic and hopeful. And I would say do some research and put in a purchase order like ASAP. Where, where are these places that... It's, it's the truck manufacturers, but they don't always stop. And so, they, they run, the, the price is running, like I can get it online for, for a little over $500, and the truck manufacturer I got the price from, they built the last truck in the town, $711. So you know, I'm sure they're getting that cut. So it, I mean, that's why I'm trying to look into getting it. So if you have an online source that is less, including the shipping, I mean, still it's over the the authorization. Um, I mean, the earliest at this point would be next Monday. So we would need to make sure that the stuff is in so we can pay for it out of Right. Yeah. So, I mean, but if we do it with a credit card, that will pretty much do it. So. Am I authorized to this? No, not for that amount of money. So if you've got an online source, but we can have a board member do it. Okay. If we, but it has to be after next Monday. Monday. We still need to know what it is about the world horizon, right? right? So, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So the invoice says before the 31st. As long as the invoice states before the 31st. Well, if it's a credit card, we'll be right. able to, that that would be the best way to right. manage it. Because that, that is definitely energy. something that yeah. that'll, it's definitely a factor in managing road storage. Yeah. But we'll need a purchase order, and because of the amount, we'll need to have a, a board member, I think, actually either sit with Caroline. We just, you know, this is right. above the sort of credit card limit that we had set out. If it's, a, if it's a dealer I can get it to that we deal with, then I'll try that too. But I'll yeah. make sure I can get the, the, yeah. the best price. I mean, okay. I wanted to bring that to your attention yeah. for that reason. I mean, it's, I had to worry to manage the road this road's all usage and try to get That's hopeful down. news. Thank you. Any snow on the horizon? Uh, I think everything's going to be set at the end of this week. The end of this week. <laughs> According to Keith on Channel All right. 6. Well, good maybe luck. Maybe a few times next week. So good luck. We'll see what we'll, happens. We'll be thinking of you, Chief Rutherford. is point and it's for our one article for the fire engine. Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars series. Do we know we've already done this? I don't think I put a PO in for it. I did one for the car. But I didn't do that with Dr. Caroline and she did not have one. So Do we know what one one article is? I don't have it over time. Doesn't matter. It would be nice. 12 whatever. Yeah, it's not it, was, it was one of the early ones. It was early. Yeah. Three or four, somewhere early. It was. I don't know the number either. Or an article between one and 22? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't find it. Uh, move to accept purchase Probably order. There's no orange cookie. Yeah, there's this one out the there. Yeah, oh, so right. Move to accept purchase order 1326 to Tone. Toyne. Toyne. Point for um, uh, Point Metro Star Rescue Pumper 2018 for a total of $450,000. This will come out of Warren Article Number. It's in the color pages. What? Color pages. Color pages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was our contract for this amount? Yep. Okay. Uh, so I'm thinking this through here. We're 
probably we've got the bond money, which is minus the hundred and nine thousand. So we might need to go in for a short term loan to make the difference until we because we're not gonna get the grant money until after the truck. Yeah. So so that's just, I'm just saying this out loud. This is just a yeah. detail that we're going to have to yeah. Yeah. take care of. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. And before you leave, let's see if we can find a date to do that. All right, great. All right, so uh, are ready to call the question, Jody? All, right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. I never know who gets them. Here. <laughs> I keep yours. Police chief takes See, it. This is, I, it's police beyond me. Police, the police chief takes his. Oh, he takes his? Yeah. Caroline takes those down and she goes in. Let me find their way back. Okay. The next thing we have is for um, outfitting of the command. So on the 1329, it's the two way communications. Uh, and the way I kind of have this one written up is the cost of the vehicle is $33,269. The warrant article is $40,000. It's $40,000. I'm going to write the number here. Okay. Article number 13 was for $40,000. So after the purchase of the vehicle, that left us $67,31. And to get the uh, radio. Installed the lighting package, installed the lettering and the striping between the radio and the lighting package is about $8,400. The striping, they still haven't given me a number, so what I've done is I've taken the 67 from the Warren article, and that's documented in the way that uh, Caroline wanted it. And then there's a couple of miscellaneous items where we have money that's left. Um, one is a protective clothing line, and the other is a training line. 13 for one, and two to the other, bring it up to 10,031. That would cover it, the lettering section. It kind of gave me a preliminary estimate of like $1,500 to do it. So by using those three line items, or not, or not, we cover that. And even when pulling that out, it's still money back than some of those line items. So There's a good department manager. I got the bump straight. <laughs> Move to accept purchase order 1329 to 2 communication services for command vehicle, radio lighting, package lettering, and striping for a grand total of $10,031. I'll second. All right, so just bear with me. I just, no, I just want to make no. sure that I'm, I'm perfectly clear. Yeah, I might have been confused and trying to throw that out there, but I was trying to just. It's just after, it's after dinner. I understand. You know? I, I just, I, I'm a little slower. <laughs> And I don't drink wine. I like to be drinking wine with dinner, but I don't drink oh, it. Well, I could have a meeting. Is that? All right. So, so this sixty-seven thirty-one is the balance that's in the command vehicle wine. Right. And the rest, you you have identified budget dollars there. Right. We're not going to expense them there, though. Only because. It's not a protective clothing expense, or it's not a training expense. Right. So the budget dollars will cover it. But I'm trying to think. Um, probably vehicle, just vehicle, up oh, vehicle. We'll put it in the vehicle line. Well, we can do that without one. The vehicle line is probably going to be earmarked for something else now. We'll, we'll, we'll move the, the budget. It's it's yeah. it's just where should the accounting happen? What is the nature of the expense? I understand. Yeah. So, and I'm not sure, I don't know exactly what all your lines are, but just off the top of my head, it must be a vehicle. So those are, can I just take a peek? That's my budget material right there. Yes. I try to we'll manage it right appropriately. There. Yes, sir. Well, let's see. Here's the vehicle one that's down near the bottom of the vehicle repairs. It's, it's $5,000 or something left in there, I think. I yeah, you don't really have the, I mean, <clears throat> 
We have to be repair line. Slash maintenance or something. We'll just and so we'll I think we'll account for it there because it is associated with the vehicle directly. Yeah. Right? Well again, it is yeah. that vehicle. Yes. It can go to this one or it, some of that's gonna be used towards the fire engine also. Because there's some of the expenditures on that behalf. So it's just a matter of which one we take it from. But the money's on there to do it. Right. But taking it from doesn't as well, I, it has to be there to take it from. But yeah, what is. we're taking from is the budget dollars. Where we, it's the, making sure we're accounting for it in a place that seems to make sense. Gotcha. So I think okay. that the, I understand what you're the vehicle repair slash maintenance is, is probably the best that, that we have. Yep. That's fine. Do you have any other comments or questions? No. All right, I'm ready to call it then. All those in favor say aye. 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 And we had the uh, gentleman from two way at the station last week. Yeah, or the radio for that into the engine, which should be in this week. And the cars should go down there sometime this week and get it done. It's a two or three day process. Okay. But that's all the stuff right there. It's that's be, here. This is it's kind of a one stop shop, and that should cover everything. And I think that that number on the bottom is actually going to be high. I think we're going to come in under that, but I don't want to give it just a little bit of a leeway. Okay. Perfect. Just for the budget dollars fit, trying to manage it as best as I can. Yes. So, so, Mark, what I'm looking at here, these are purchase orders that you've already put in place? Are yeah. They? yeah, that's the stuff that's going back with me. Oh, okay. This is, all right. That's what Caroline gave me. Oh, I see. This You're is my actual expenditures to November 30th, right here. Okay. So I know exactly what's left, so I can manage my budget appropriately. Got it. And this is, this is for me. Because he doesn't get his right away. No, please shoot together. Yeah, that's what these are. So these are the ones after Caroline does her thing and find out what exactly we need. Okay, very good. Okay. Anything uh, else? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, yeah, I'm staying ahead of the curve here. This is, again, the two way communications. As George is getting ideas. He says, Well, I only had, I, I, I didn't know I could bring 10 purchase orders at one meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, again, we're in we're Your budget's Dece done. Sorry. We're, in yeah. we're in December, and I know we want to have all this stuff in here, so the budget yes, dollars come it has out to of the be correct one. Exactly. So Otherwise, that's why we're I've been, I, realizing yeah. ourselves. Yep, yeah, we next had year. it come up, so all this stuff will be in order. Perfect. And there's only one that I just don't have numbers for yet, and that's going to come in. And estimate is fine. I'll be, I'll be all set. Estimates yep. are fine. And that's kind of where I'm going to have it. Okay. This one is, again, the two way, and this is for the purchase and installation of the radio for the new fire engine, okay? And this is one of those line items that had, had the funding in it. It's the equipment line item. Mm -hmm. This is equipment, yep. right? It's going to be a new radio and a new fire truck. And as of right now, the balance of it is $5,700. The cost of the new radio installation is $5,032.15. So there's still money left over to put the new radio in the fire engine. Move to accept purchase order 1327 to two way communication services for mobile radio for engine two out of the equipment line for $5,032.15. I'll second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Can I see your list again, please? Your list of, of lines? Or, or could. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe the, what what we uh, did for the command vehicle. Could any of that come out of equipment? Is, is equipment the better line? Now, now that I'm thinking about it. Can I can I see the types of items again? Lettering? Did you say lettering? She had oh, we have it radios, lighting, lettering, and striping. Basically, it's a complete outfitting of equipment. I understand where you're going with that, and all right, it's equipment, but the, the equipment. For That's radio. okay. It, you've got the budget. We're going to move the. Yep. We'll, we'll be fine. It's where should it be accounted for? That's there's budgeting, there's accounting, and that could be equipment also. I know what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. You could do that too. So. C K. Yes. Or balance. Or we could, yeah, the whole the bottom line is balance, right. Yeah. You're going to do your adjustable now. I think 
Maybe the equipment is, be is better, but we'll, uh, we'll talk to Caroline and see if uh, it's also in there. <laughs> Two more. Okay. This one is to the city of Dover, to uh, St. Crowley's outfit over there. This is for repair of the forestry. I know, a couple of weeks ago, they came back from a call and they went to back it in and they dropped the transmission cable so it couldn't shift anything. They just sat there. So it got sent up there to get that cable and the adjustments and whatnot done. So it's to the city of Dover. It's number 1325. It's under the vehicle repair line item. It was $278 to repair the forestry needle. Purchase, uh, move to accept purchase order 1325. To City of Dover for repair of transmission shift cable on Forestry okay. One for a total of two hundred and seventy eight dollars and forty three cents to come on a vehicle repair line. And a second. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 So we know it's there. And then along with the other things. So today we're checking with Caroline in the building maintenance line item is like eighteen hundred dollars left. So what we're in, doing include including the encumbering PO yep. outside yep. okay. Yep, and all those pieces are in place. Okay. And if all those have been taken care of we paid still eighteen. Okay. Um, I had a uh, contractor come in and give me a price to do some painting inside the building, which is the meeting room radio room. Um, try to get members of the department to do it, but that's just not their skill. They just don't want it done incorrectly. So it was you know, professionally done. So he came in and gave me a price. I don't know if you've been into the uh, meeting room. You've seen it. It's not a normal you know, eight-foot wall like you've got here. These are 20-foot walls. So we're going to redo the ceiling, the walls, the trim in that room and in the radio room. And the price to do that is uh, Ray Talon out of Garrison Paint, out of the maintenance line, $1,200, which would leave us still six. $600 left in the maintenance line. So if we didn't need some paint or something like that, there's enough for me to finish that. So we can get this project done on this year's budget. Number 1320. Move to accept purchase order 1328 to Ray Talon Garrison Painting for painting of ceiling, walls, trim in the day room and radio room uh, for a total of uh, $1,200. I'll second. No questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Sorry? Sure, you see one is The purchase order that SEMO, if uh, I agree, try to get him in here. If you don't, we just need to at least collect the information that is an outstanding PO so we can give it to our auditor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he will agree to bring it into the new year, sometimes he won't, it depends. Okay. But he certainly will if we don't tell him. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Calling and, him. and George, the same the same with you. If we've already issued a PO and it's it's in the it's in the we're in the middle of doing it and if it looks like we will get the invoice pretty soon after the new year, you know many times we can make sure that we're using the uh, seven, fiscal seventeen dollars. Yep. And Caroline has that. We still get a lot of these things. Just, uh, there's some sticking on there, but they didn't stick very well. And some of those things obviously are going to be completed just for a little bit down the road. And and she kind of holds on to those until I tell her that I kept the new board so that she can finish that yeah. work. But at least the money's been yes, set but aside we need, to do these things. Yeah. We need to do it with our auditor. It's not yep. you know, I understand that the too. rest of the you know, all the rest of the year, it's just us. Yeah. And then as we closer to December or whatever and cross it, then we have to um, yeah. do what the auditor tells us to do. Yeah. Oh, I understand. That's why I wanted to try to get some of this stuff done before yes. we get to this. Perfect. Okay. So I don't have any more for that for the evening. I'm going to be here next Monday night with the numbers for the, for the last expenditure, basically, when it comes to new vehicles. And I, the change orders that we had signed for towing a few weeks ago, this is a spin-off from that. 
and it's going to be coming out of budget dollars here for some of the add-ons and the extras that we did under those change orders. And it's roughly in the, in the $3,500 range for some of the other things that we deem necessary that weren't going to fit in the warrant article. And we'll the be, hopefully here. we'll get the invoicing too at some point. Yep. Okay. I'm going to try to have that for Monday. So you know, similar to what I have there, like two ways giving me their invoices or their estimate partials right there. It's not the actual completed invoice. Right. right. That's that, at least we yeah. know where we're in the ball. Yes. So I'm going to round that up this week. And that's going to take care of all the issues that we'll have right. to do. Perfect. And even looking through all of this and, and coming up with all these things, there's still going to be money left over in the fire department budget at the end of the year. Thank you. As every year I've sat in this office and in that seat, I've always turned some money back in. With yep. all this manipulation and extra stuff and this and that, it's still going to come out. And well, that's with, really well within limits. Right. And I mean, it even, it's the town that has to stay within our overall budget. And while we look to, to departments to keep within their allotments, sometimes that doesn't happen. We, we had a terrible time at the highway department this oh, year. Oh, yeah, I understand. It, you know, winters just, are unpredictable. You can't put you, a number yeah, on that. So it was, it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I think we're, we're pretty much there. And, so, like I said, I think and we're hoping for good weather. There'll be some funds that go if you need to fill any gaps. Yeah, so that's that's the super. fire department has a trouble. I'll okay. put this back outside. Thank Anything you. for me? And one thing, um, since we don't have an ice rink area, and I know it was donated from one of the firemen. Um, what was, you, I'm sorry, what was donated? The ice rink liner? The, the liner. liner. Yeah. The liner. So, Sean yeah, so, and I also know you guys are upgrading your sewer upgrades in less than four years, is on the CIP. Once that sewer upgrade goes in, the ice rink's going to be gone away anyway, because that's where it's going to have to go. Because right now they're here on the dry well. Once you upgrade to a real septic, they're going to need that space where the ice rink is anyway. So I don't want it to go to waste. I, I thank my family for donating, but it, it's theirs to have. They, they were the ones that donated it. It was no cost to the town, and I don't want it sitting there doing nothing. So if Sean would like it back, I don't have a problem with that. So. No, clearly yeah, not. His son is heavily into hockey. So if they could use it at home, he's or got so plenty of space to set it up in his house. Exactly. So we did. I mean, we have appropriated money for it. So, but we never used it. He was always it was donated. They had bought it before the year started, so we couldn't allocate it back to them and pay them for it. Okay. So it ended up becoming a donation to the town. So then, this year we know we can't do it. And then I'm thinking, okay, future, future. I'm like, oh wait, CIP, you guys are going to be doing a septic upgrade in a couple of years. Once that septic upgrade goes in, if we have an ice rink, it's going to have to go somewhere else anyway. Because the septic's going to go where the ice rink is. You can't put a rink on top of a septic no, system? No, you can't put anything well, on top of the septic. Well, you the CIP looking at, it's not so much as putting in a septic system. Mm -hmm. It's more of hooking into the town system. So you're not putting in a septic Nope. Right. Oh, it's, it's so the expense of hooking into the town. It stops right by mid construction on that side of the overpass. Oh. And so that upgrade was put in there to try to hook into the town's system and not create its own independent system at the station. That's what that's aimed at. Okay, we want to increase that line on the CIP now. <laughs> Which would be a whole other conversation. Well, yeah, day. I mean, there's the mechanism, there's years, the process, sure, there's the process for that. doing that. And then the other <laughs> caveat is that, you know, while there are years written on the CIP, I mean, every year it gets looked at anew. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, the years get manipulated or right. it can be changed depending on right now, the circumstances. Right. Okay. So. so. Okay, I thought you were going for a septic. All right. You're trying to tell you what I think that would be the best move. Yeah. I mean, that system rather than okay. something that has to be maintained and okay. funded and whatnot. And they just don't if they do that, it. the ice rink can stay where it is, but in the meantime. That, that was the overall plan. Okay. The okay. Back to the ice rink. Shall we donate it back? No, I, I think certainly if there is no immediate plan to reinstitute mm -hmm. the ice rink, we should yeah. make that offer to, to Sean. 
Do you mind? No, I'll bring do that. it back. Sean may be there tonight. He plays okay. on the men's league on Monday night, so I'm not sure if he'll be there. And thank you very much. Right now, no one understands ice on the committee that does rap. <laughs> Understand ice. Well, that's why nobody stepped yeah. up to do it. But yeah, like when when is it supposed to be? Like the ground has to freeze before you put the boards up and plastic and all uh, that jazz. No, no, we didn't so. do that. We had it all set up long before that came. It's easier to set it up when the ground is actually not frozen because you can drive in all the metal stakes and whatnot. And then once the ground freezes, then it's just a matter of just we used to sort of run the lines out of the fire station off the filling areas and just fill it up. It's just a matter of playing with the temperatures and all that really was. I used to do it by skating rink for my family. When I grew up, we did our ice skating rink. We just waited for the first snow. Of course, then they had snows. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd use the we'd use the snow as a snow bank. All right, we'd yeah. Like, you know, you shovel it up, make yeah. a snow bank around the rink, and then take the garden hose. That freezes and that kind of does and the same thing. It does the same thing, yeah. Worked for us. Mm -hmm. We had a skating rink in our backyard. So, yeah. Good old Yankee Zoo. You know. <laughs> I will make sure I get that message to you. I'll convey everybody's thoughts on that. So. Thank you. Anything else? Just that uh, Herb Uetta was here earlier. Yes. Uh, I saw him sitting there. Oh, okay. So we're going to be inviting the state to come speak to us again about Portland Avenue. And we will be inviting at the same time our public safety officials, so you, Chief Ducharme, uh, you know, our road agent, mm -hmm. uh, to come and listen and, and talk about how how best to make Portland Avenue a safer place for, for all of us. Yeah, I, I remember we did that after the incident where the, where the girl was killed three years ago. Yes. And I know Mr. Ewe was kind of one carrying the ball on that. And I can understand this time because it was his son that was involved uh, it, in the it, It's a terrible, terrible and, twist uh, of fate. Oh, it was. Absolutely. I mean, that, that whole night was. Thank God right. he's alive, but still it's a terrible But yeah, he's just fate. trying to get used to his limb back. Yeah. That was the issue that night. Yeah. So, well, I don't know if he knew that how they're trying to find the guy. Is that the hit and run that That's was on the there? That's the hit and run. The guy that they put, uh, they know who it is. It's just a matter of finding them. He's not like they I see. at this point. But uh, yeah, they, they know who it is. Okay. Well, we'll keep you posted anyway. Did he turn himself in this week? Yeah. Uh, okay. Last I knew, they were still looking for the individual. I know there was one, two of the family looking for him. One turned themselves in. I'm not sure if it was that accident or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, whenever we find that out, we come in. Okay. You know, we went down that road before with the DOT people and whatnot. And I don't think they'll ever put a light in the That's probably what people would like to see with the expense of that. Probably not work, but got to start somewhere. Well, you know, we're going to be inviting some of the safety people from the Department of Transportation. We are, we've gone the road in the 10-year road plan with the metro region, whatever, through Stratford Regional Planning. The, the problem is it's not, it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't approved because of, not that it wasn't approved. There were other plans. It wasn't in. The, it's not in the priorities section that will be addressed. Right. That's that's the issue because you know we're there. You know, the Rollins were competing with you know. Sure. Big cities that have a Rochester, lot more, Summers, where you know, we have planners who can bring you know can make all of the case and yep. you know full time employees who can you know deluge us all with data and. So it, it's difficult to compete under those I mean, we can do it in our, in our frame, just, you know, just in our volume and what we can show. I know, I know the Chief, Chief Duchamp can you know, bring up the numbers for how many times his agency responds. They're the same with us. Yeah. As far as it goes in our community, that intersection is where we have the highest amount of accidents. Is that one of them? So we're, when, what we're hoping is to address it by the safety route rather than... Uh, oh, I understand. Yeah, the last so time we tried it, we were talking about lowering speed. Yeah, and we did, good. by five miles yeah. an hour, but, you know, it's time to review it again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because so. when things happen, yeah, they're usually not yeah. good. Right. And I think that's the point. The, the downside's really bad. Yeah. Because of the speeds on yeah, the exactly. road. So yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to you guys for kind of giving me one of your intended.
Outfall side, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually the, that's the side on the Legion side. I I I, 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 I don't remember which is steeper, but well, they're probably both yeah, steep. Yeah, they're both pretty. Yeah. So uh, I know. Uh, so guardrails, if you do them the way the Department of Transportation does them, are expensive. Mm -hmm. Are there other options? I can look into the wooden ones and what they accept because they got to be able to break away but the metal ones don't break away easy too so there's a there's ways of doing it we in Berwick we just put up I put up 60 feet of guardrail around in the winter section just to you know basically to let people know it's not the road anymore mm -hmm. and so you know but that is just to let people know that this you know it's it's going to slow them down from going over the embankment. Mm -hmm. So it can probably be done, be done with the wooden guardrails, and we can install those. I'll just look in to see what they accept okay. before we do that, and I'll have to call the state and see what's going right. so on. There, the there is guidelines to follow. <laughs> so uh, he thought, and I, I, I have no way of, met, of I, I really don't know, but he thought that it was actually steeper than what it was before, and you wouldn't know either because... Uh, it, 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 it drops down. It drops down, down. yeah. So... I mean, this several places in town I've noticed that, I mean, it, it, it's a small town and God is an old... Well, that, and that's, that, that's sort of what Royal Tanner told us. He said, yes, could, could it make it safer to have guardrails? Yes. You know, we did have an easement issue, and, and so... We ended up dropping it, but he said also, you know, as a justification or or something to mention is that there are other places in town. I mean, this is the way the town has grown up. The town has grown up with these kinds of risks and that they appear willing to accept. So, but nonetheless, nonetheless, yes. So, so if you could, unless Jody has an objection, let's at least get some information. Uh, I, I, you can take a look at it and yeah, you give us your opinion. You know, because we'll, that one is by the school and stuff. That drops off considerably on both sides also. I, I don't want to go see guy who get put up everywhere, but I, this place is that, you know, it's... Isn't there one on one? Not where they put the Ucullet in. There was never one before either. We no. didn't remove any. No, right. So, but well, I mean, it, it, yeah, there's a lot in town, but it's, you know, it's... It's the way it's always been. Yes. You know, and, you know, right. So I don't know. I can look in to see what rulings are and stuff. I don't believe they can force you to do any of that. It's a safety issue with some cases. We're just looking at it. But I mean, Bear Road, you got places where if you went off the edge of Bear Road, you're not going to see that kind of until somebody sees it down in the ditch. But, yeah. You know, certain yeah. spots. But, but there are places. Well, let's let's take a look at Pine and yeah. you can take a look at Willie as well and, and give us some. Ideas. Yep. Yep. Correct. So, but it was no big down. <laughs> this was the Department of Engineers, since you guys were talking about fine, um, the Department of Army Engineers for fine. Um, we have to sign yeah, we do have to sign. So, I've got the data. I have another question while I'm here. What is the situation with that Sligo road narrowing? So, so. I, I'm not aware of, yeah, I, yeah. we went down, looked at it, and see what. I mean, where it's down to. Yes. Well, so, so several years back, um, our road agent came to us and said that it, it you know, there's a crack, it's, it's washing out, so, you know, it's dangerous. And Chief Ducharme 
reiterated that point, and so we closed it. You know, based on Chief Ducharme's recommendation for public safety, we closed we closed it. Period. We have been trying to get some grant money to uh, rebuild it, to put in a box a culvert. Yeah. Um, we had applied for grant money. I can tell you, because of public hearings, that there were some people. We never got the grant money, so it sort of be, that became a moot issue. But they weren't happy about the idea of taking out a what is a Civil War era dog green, yeah, green, dog you know, stack. yeah, yeah, uh huh, artifact uh, structure and replacing it with a you know a, a mm -hmm. box culvert. But we never got there. And meanwhile, you know, where it's closed, we didn't get the grants. Uh, it was creating a hardship for the farm because he, he, they, not he, she and she, in order to get to fields, they had to skirt and go around. So uh, we, we, Hoyle Tanner was here working on another emergency, which was the Partridge Lane culvert. And we asked him, is there anything we can do to reopen it at all? So they, they looked it over and said that, yes, we think we can do it as a one, you know, bring the sides in. I'm not going to be able to tell you the engineer. We've got all the plans somewhere. Okay. Caroline can, can show you where those are. That's, that's what I want to look at. Yeah. Is. It just was, it wasn't the culvert, it wasn't the, the roads itself, right. it but was it was the, the washout right. on the sides. Yeah, right. it was the head, wa head walls. The head walls. Yeah. Well, that's all stacked granite and stuff, and that, you know, Ed and I would now look at that. Why can't this be built back the way it was? With they do these granite walls, I mean these cement walls on each side. They brought it out, and then the cement slab on the top of that. Nothing's going to be taken out of what it looks like. Leave the old granite. I mean, that's just to widen the road back out. I'm just wondering if we could. If, I don't know what it would take to have coil tan to see if there's another option. Well, what, one of the things that we'll do at the beginning of the year is we generally lay out our plans for the use of professional services. So we do have some money. You know, we'll do it with legal services, and we do it with engineering services. Now, we haven't, I say we do it with engineering services. We haven't had any luxury. I mean, we've been, like, doing the, the things that, you know, have been, like, thrown in front of our face that we need to attend to. But this time, we sort of, we have uh, maybe 5,000, I think, just kind of general engineering, knowing that, you know, there are some things we would like to use them for, like uh, maybe uh, helping us re-engineer drain uh, stormwater in the village, the Sligo Road culverts. So, you know, the, what it is we actually ask them to do will be dependent on, you know, a conversation. So we'd be happy to have you as part of that conversation. I ask them that is a way of doing it instead of having to go into tearing that all out, you know. They, there was, um, I'll let you find the plans and probably on my desk because we don't, we don't on the, like on the, to lose things. On the website, if, if not on the website, certainly on Google Drive so we can give you the links. You just need to ask Caroline or ask me as a, as a reminder. They did a, a study for us that said here's the short term, which is what we did, and we had, we, we did an RFP that fixed Partridge Lane, slip lined Partridge Lane culvert, and allowed us to reopen Sligo as a one lane bridge. That was all one RFP. Uh, both projects were done under one RFP. Yeah, I mean, I'm not looking to rebuild that. I mean, I'm just seeing that there's other options. Well, we'll take a look. So, 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 as part of all of that, they did write us a study, you know, short term, medium term, long term. Long term is. Here we are, I'll go and put it in culvert. Yeah, Yes, but it's 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 the span is such that we think it will easily be justified as a bridge replacement, in which case we can get the 80-20, we can get money from the, the state in order to do that. But I would say that's a good place to start is to take a look at their proposal, you know, at their and uh, the results of their analysis. Um, I mean, that's I like a road. Some things can they done it that way and they go to last it for years. Why aren't we doing this thing anymore? Yes. You know, well, some, in some cases, the weather events right. have created challenging prospects for us. Right. Well, sorry, I, mean, that's, I just want to thank you. Yes. I don't want to get into a big study. Or, you know, Take a look at what they said, and and then we'll talk. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you, George. You.
I okay to leave this with you guys, or should I bring it back um, when town hall is open? Bring, please bring it back when town hall. Um, or we could no, we could just we could hand it over. Actually, sorry, I didn't know you were. No, no, I was. I was going to say, listen anyway. No, it's good to know what's going on in the town. It is. So you've got it filled out. So what will yeah. happen is that our building inspector will look at it next Monday. Cool. And we will probably uh, we will look at it Monday evening, like here, and then we'll let you know. Cool. So and then we'll let you know what the damage is. Okay. No problem. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we'll just need to make sure that Caroline sees this. All right. Uh, town administration project updates. So we did, in fact, close on the USDA loan. I had a moment's panic today when I didn't see the money in the PDEP account, but it's because of a bunch of citizens. So, but we paid off. Uh, Kenny Buck Savings Bank, we've got the USDA money, uh, so the financial aspect of the project is closed, um, and we just need to gather invoices together and make sure that uh, they're all available to the auditor. So that took place last week. Uh, we're going to table the Oak Street Boundary perambulation. We will table paid holidays for employees, although I can tell you I do have the name of the law firm that uh, works with the New Hampshire Municipal Association on matters of employees, so I will be calling them. Uh, budget committee communications. So this is uh, the result of a uh, conversation, discussion, whatever, that came up with the budget committee last Wednesday when the budget committee was asking to increase uh, their communication line from 300 to 500. And, um, as I left the meeting and then the ensuing day or so, I was disquieted and wondering if, you know, the budget committee wanted to look over, you know, voters guide that, that the board, our board may or may not do, et cetera, et cetera. So I called the municipal association to find out what, what is the budget committee's rights and responsibilities with regard to communicating to the public? The Municipal Association responded thusly that uh, certainly the budget committee can provide in the annual report result of its annual activities, sort of like other committees do. Yeah. And otherwise, the way that they communicate to the public is by presenting the public with a budget and by recommending or not recommending warrant articles that have appropriations associated with them, and that is the extent of the communication that the budget committee uh, should be doing. So I suspect that this is not going to um, fall on happy ears around the entire table, but uh, I asked the Municipal Association if they would be willing to talk to a member of the budget committee who, who might just want to have it confirmed. So just letting you know that, that uh, that's what came up, that's what I did, and um, the budget committee will be meeting again this Wednesday. Uh, transfer station sticker placement. Was that your? Uh, take that off. Yeah. Take it off? They're, yeah, they're already, sold. they're already selling them. They're already okay. doing her little hand gesture at the desk. So. Oh, OK. So we're good? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, highway safety, I believe we've already talked about this, so I will be contacting the state and yeah. keeping the board uh, informed. A uh, credit card for the janitor. I happen to have breakfast with uh, Richard on Saturday at the fire station. God bless you. And <laughs> doesn't invite me out for breakfast. <laughs> I we didn't, we didn't invite one today. another earlier. We, we just got there. And he said he had read the policy and said there's nothing in there about department heads. So, and it's true, it doesn't say department heads. So the question remains um, whether or not the board would like to issue uh, credit card to uh, Richard. Which is why it's probably in here. I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Do I have to make a decision right this second? No, no, no. No. Okay. You can take a look at that. Can I sleep on it too? Absolutely, no. absolutely can. It's always a good thing, actually. So, I'm fine. I just do want to point that out that it, it there isn't anything there, but it's always good to become reacquainted anyway with policies. So yes, I encourage that. Uh, 
Can I go ahead to the? Yeah. Okay. Next one is the Avatar contract. So if you recall, they sent us a contract four years or so five years, and it had the date of verification. It was going to happen every year for four years. And I said, gee, I don't think it's not what we wanted. We talked to Chad. It's not what we wanted. So they've reissued another contract. I said, also, we need to make sure that we're not encumbering future boards. Yeah. Even with it. So they have, excuse me, late today, I think I got another contract from them. The data, did you get it? I got the response back from somebody yeah, other someone. than Chad. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, I didn't have time to read it, so we can read it. I, I don't want to act on it tonight, but I do know that they've removed the data verification. Yeah. And she said there is language in there that says providing the funding has been authorized or approved you know, for every year. So that's the, I think that's the out that we need in order to be able to sign a multi-year contract. But take a look at it. Uh, land use change tax, uh, Mr. Phipps. This is the case that uh, where Mr. Phipps is contacting an attorney. The attorney had written to us, and we sent it along to Avatar, and Avatar has come back and said uh, that they still deny it. So did you read it? Do you want to have, take the time to read it before we decide to just accept the denial from Avatar? I read, I, it's a, the denial must be in here. I read last week's, the stat. Did it? This was a particular denial from yeah. Avatar on the FIPS request, you know, with regard to, is composting and agriculture use, you know, which is what he's using it for. That's Land use change tax. So if you have something in current yeah. use, if you take it out, you have to pay a land use right. change tax. It's yes. a change in your yeah. taxation. And didn't we send this to legal? We sent the Megan to legal. And that's been resolved. Um, we we ch we chose to send it to Avatar first because there are assessors, and you know we wanted them to look at the rationale that was being offered by the attorney. Is that the is that the attorney's letter? This is Avatar's. Well, we do not disagree with the compost production area is in agricultural use. It is not valid under the use of the rules and cannot be enrolled in the current use program. I thought composting was, which is what their lawyers said. If you read the whole thing, what he says is when he's talk when the attorney is talking about that, he's referring to some other ordinance or RSA, that the land use RSA specifically lists what can be done or counted as agricultural, and composting is not one of them. So how about this? How about if you take a look at that more carefully? I'm even trying looking at it carefully now, but I mean it's you know 7:30 at night. You know, take take a look at it, and and the question is going to be, we'll have Michael take a look at it too, so that next week we're ready to, you know, either accept it or not. So I, I think our choice will be to uh, either accept the additional ruling from. Avatar, in which case it's a continued denial, and I think at that point they can take it to the, um, you know, the, the tax court, the land use tax court, the actual official name escapes me. At which point Avatar, as a part of their contract, represents us at that hearing, or we can decide to uh, not not go along with Avatar. I guess those are the choices. So we should take a look at that more carefully. Okay. We, there should be an abatement for the veterans credit that's been under discussion for a while. Do we have the red folder? I think it's here. So when we do our folder work, have you done any of these, Jody? No. Okay. So when we do our folder work, we'll we should be, see that. Um, okay, recreation, basketball. 
Yes. So the girls basketball um, three four has three girls um, that would like to play. The boys team has enough to create a team. Um, parents are being charged twenty dollars a person to cover rough fees. Um, the girls team says they cannot make a team. We reached out to Sumner who they also cannot make a team. They only have seven and they also don't have a coach. So we reached out to them to see if the two can join this year. Could be but we charge two our or three. 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 Up to three. So I'm not sure if all three will go. Um, but those are the three that keep showing up for open gym. So we charge our residents twenty dollars. So um, we contacted Dover uh, Summers Rec, and out of the rec line, it would we would pay the difference because theirs is fifty. So we would pay the thirty dollar difference per child. It actually saves us money because we're not using gym time. We're not paying reps because their home base would be Summers Rec. I don't want the girls not to play. Well, last year, because they only had open gym, everybody else went everywhere else. So now they're having to restart that base again. So because they only did open gym because they started so late in the year. When you said they only did open gym as opposed to having a team? Is that Correct. Okay. Remember, they came in really late. We didn't know that they were part of the town. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now we have a rec line for them. And so this would come out of the winter rec slash basketball? Yes, but for 2018, because the registration would not be until 2000, January 1st, 2018. The first game isn't until like the third week of January. And there are budget dollars in there? Uh, we budget, as long as it passes, for 2018, as long as the budget passes, we put another $1,100 in. Okay. Yeah, so, I think it's a great idea. So, this way everybody gets to play. Um, and actually, the Rollinsburg Rollins is the one that's stepping up to coach. So it's a win-win for both towns, it's a win-win for the girls, um, the boys will have more gym time here, so so far so yeah. good. No, so. That's, that seems like an appropriate use of, of that rec line money. I don't know, um, uh, there is money, Let, let's just, just do a motion, if you will, okay. that the town uh, supports subsidizing uh, girls basketball subsidizing the difference in girls' basketball ball okay. between this, our town and, and, and Summersworth uh, to the extent that the money is available in, the, in okay. the, the basketball line. So make a motion to um, supplement grades 3-4 girls' basketball to the, town, to the city of Summersworth up to the amount of $100 um, for the registration fees for girls basketball, 2000 to, for the 2018 season. I'll second that. Any discussion? I'll, I, well, I, I will. So, I, I, is it when you say up to 100? Well, it's 30 dollars a piece, just in case. So, 90. Oh, so it's 30. So we're going to. So, oh, I see. I got it. I got it. Okay, piece. I couldn't do the math. So I got I it. just put it at an even 100, just to be. Just to be Okay. Because uh, they are charging it in town, in an, a, a resident rate rather than an out of resident rate. Do we want, uh, I'm just going to, did I second it yet? Yes. I believe you did. All right, then I'll, we can talk about that. So, so what if a fourth person wants to come? I mean, I guess I don't, I don't want to necessarily, you know. Okay, you want So to I want it sort of like I'll a little. i it up to. Well, as long as so here's what I here, here's what I think we can do is just say as long as the budget supports it, you know, the winter line slash basketball line supports it. Okay. Right. So, 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 so I'm not the parliamentarian. Michael does that. So I will remove my. Yeah, we'll just start it all over again. Okay, and I'm going to remove my second. Yeah, and we'll just start fresh. So go, so, you go. Make a motion to. Sorry. Uh, make a motion for grades three, four girls basketball um, to be supplemented um, to the town, uh, to the city of Summersworth for registration fees um, as budget allows out of the recreation winter recreation line for the 2018 season. I will happily second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 
And if anybody wants a coach, they need an assistant now. So who was the coach? I have no idea. Oh, okay. I thought it was somebody from Rollsford. It is, um, but I'm not really sure. I only met oh, okay. one of the moms. Kelly's cool. um, Kelly's the basketball person. I've only been able okay. to attend a couple of the open gyms. That's very nice. So That's great. This is a nice way to provide. Yeah, so it helps two towns out, really. So it really works out great. So Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Joint loss. I know you met this morning. Think we did. Say joint uh, loss? Job descriptions um, are partially in. Um, this floor has not submitted any um, job descriptions. So um, I was asked to put down the hammer on our staff because chief is chief there of his staff. staff on this floor, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And um, so, if we're you know, really I have to say the tax about... collector did give me something years, two years ago. Mm -hmm. I have not looked. Well, I did try looking for it, but I just not scoured my material. I can't find out on my drive, but yeah. So that's what's in. Um, they do have some preliminary ones. Um, the custodian handed in his. Um, the compactors um, and the veilers. Um, compactors. The, the guys that work at the transfer station, um, the one that can run a compactor, and when you're running the veiler. So not all, everybody that can run the veiler can run the compactor. So, um, and then um, to um, then the road agent, and then once he gets them all in, he's going to formalize it to make it uniform, and then we'll have a final view and look over that. So, would you like the temporary ones? That's the ones we have. No. Okay. I thank you, though. So. Um, well, I will. Things yes. are really crunchy here at the moment. I know. <laughs> but we but, had four months to get this done. Yeah. I understand. So. No, I'm, I'm not. That, I'm not. I'm trying to excuse myself from not having scoured looking for the tax collector. Oh, but uh, yeah. But I, I did. I get one. specifically asked the rest of our staff. Okay. So, would you like me to send out another email? Yes. As well as, yes. <laughs> please, please get it to the chief ASAP. Yes. Missed the deadline. Part. They missed the deadline. So. Okay. Uh, that concludes the ongoing items. So we're to our standing items. What can I do to help here? Should I? Can I do something? Uh, well, board member activities. I'm meeting with Lamprey tomorrow, uh, Wednesday at 2. Um, any concerns or questions you want me to bring to them if the truck goes all the way to Epping? Uh, we need to get an, an, an estimate of what it's going to cost us per. I'm going to push to keep it at a 40 mile rate. Beautiful. So, okay. That would be perfect. It's great um, that you're doing that, but do I still get to keep my 40 miles? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Because um, that's what we need to know for budgeting. Oh, which reminds me, did we not make the agenda? Budget workshop schedule? No, we nope. did not. I don't have anything scheduled. I thought I'd put it on the agenda. Let's <laughs> see it. So we need to schedule a, a sort of what I hope is a final workshop. Are you free this Saturday? Yeah. Um, holy cow, I am. I asked Michael, but he didn't. on my kids' science project, so. Okay. I'm hoping it's not going to be long. Okay. It's 9 o'clock. Work is a start. All right. So we'll, we'll uh, use that. I hope Michael can come. 9 to? Uh, I'm hoping no more than an hour and a half. should also put out something um, to the town to start buying their stickers now. Because remember, we said there's no grace period, and it's three weeks away. What do you think about that? No, I, to yes, thank you for reminding us about this. No grace period. Okay. So, we're still all in agreement with that? This member of the board is. I am. Yeah, okay. so I think we're good. We just need to write it. Okay. Does it come from Kate or from us? I think it can come from us. Okay. So I'll draft something for us to look at. It's Monday. 
or even administratively this administratively this week. I give you authorization to send it to team and others but I I, I will look for input Monday, then we'll okay to but work. I still would look for input get your stickers now <laughs> I get the message, thank you. <laughs> get your stickers now, no Got grace it. period. <laughs> Got it. Got it. All right. You have three weeks. I'm gonna, Don't be on the naughty list. I'm going to attempt to do something with this folder because it's right in front of me. Do you want me? Right away, this is yours. Septic <laughs> uh, design or... Uh, Subdivision Lot 9, Wentworth Street, Rollinsburg Tax Map 2S Lot 18-6. Stamp that. I have two building permits here, 2017-133 uh, and-134. They've both been signed by Tom, uh, our building inspector. What actually do you need from that us? address. All right, so 133 is 620 Rollins Road, and the fee is $90. And it's electrical? Yes. It's a bath. First what? Floor, first floor bath. Okay. Um, the other is uh, s sorry, 14 Silver Lane. Um, and what else did you need? Sorry. The amount? The amount, $145. It's to 145. 145 to repair and renovate a plumbing system. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, there's more, but these were these were simple. Okay. Right. So. Actually, I think this one is simple too. I Tom has signed it. What we need is a building permit number. I don't know why it came to us without, but it must have just been. Uh -huh. Or they already had one, and then they just copied it. Right? It's a, a lot in Chinberg, uh, 14 Wentworth Street. So it's going to be 2017 dash one three something. Is it worth? Can you go log this in? Let me ask you to do that. Let me go. I'll just get the thing. Oh, I mean here is it? This? Eighteen two. There's only a couple of lots left up in there. Sure, 
number is. This is new construction. Yeah. Yeah, Tom says it doesn't have a number. Wentworth, what's the number, Jody? I think there's a, there's a map and lot, but there's also a street number. 14 Wentworth. Uh, property address is 14 Wentworth Street, map 2, lot 18-2. The subdivision lot is number 13. Oh, we'll just have to give it a number. We'll call it 136. Okay. Thank you. Did we sign it? Number no, we haven't signed it. Town and put on this permit. And it was 218.6? Map 2, 18-2. Yes. Dash two. Yeah. The property address is technically 14 Wentworth Street. And it's new construction. Yes. And the amount is? The fee is 2225 Two. Estimated construction value of um, 220000 Back on there? Yes. Thank you. Do you want me to send them an email? Send who an email? To tell him. Why? Well, he signed it. He's all set. He just, he's, he's telling us it just needs the building permit okay. number, which we just gave it. I think he didn't want to hold it up just because it didn't have a, a mm. number. That's my guess. Well, did we name it 136? Yes. Oh, this is just a long standing. So what now what happens? Do we put these back in here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know you don't like paper, you're doing great. That too? Yes, too. All right, beautiful. All right. I'll check so we can sign later. All right. So this is everything we've already done tonight. All right. Perfect. And um, I'm going to ask for an executive request for someone to clean out this folder. That's a good idea. So I asked um, because we have lots of stuff from multiple weeks now. So it's getting a little difficult thick. to manage. So all of this is old engineering stuff. I am looking for an Army Corps of Engineer building permit. Not building permit. You Army are Corps of Engineer release. Okay, yes. All right, beautiful. This is his credit card. All right, so this is a compliance certification form, Salme. It's from the uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And if you recall, we needed a special permit to do the Pine Street. And they want us to uh, return this to them following the completion of the activity and any mitigation required by the permit. So there was no additional mitigation required. Uh, so let's see. It's uh, that our activity is subject to a compliance inspection by U.S. Army Corps of Engineer representative. If they want to come see it, they said they can. So here's what I, I hope to be signing. I hereby certify that the work authorized by the above referenced permit was completed in accordance with the terms and conditions of the above referenced permit, and any required mitigation was completed in accordance with the permit conditions. We heard from our Hoyle Tanner folks and no additional mitigation was necessary. Uh, the completion date of the project was November 13, 2017. And Jody, unless you have a no problem, I will, uh, go, I'm going to sign it as the permittee. And we'll send it along its way.
That's our telephone number, 603-742-2510. Thank you. Okay. So we're, this is signed. Maybe we can put it with the pencil. This is just... Is that was credit card policy, it does say that they're not allowed to buy equipment. So unauthorized purchases is equipment. Okay. And we just told George to look into that, and that would be equipment. Yes, but so so we could we haven't authorized any of this. Right. So when we so when he comes back to us next week with the price, okay. if he determines that the best price is an online price, then what we can do, if we so choose, is authorize it and then authorize a board member to uh, do it. In other words, to waive that particular correct. Uh, Clause, okay. so that we can, and we can even authorize Caroline to do it. As long as you know, yeah, we know we're doing this. You know, we're yeah. saying it's okay. And so this, yeah, yeah. Looked at and yeah. Purchases from an employee were conflict of interest. Like this. So, yeah, you're right. There's nothing about a. a thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, a letter. And actually, Kevin Hurd's not the department head. He's the one who has the fire department. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. He's an assistant. Yeah. All right. Dear, Sus Dear Suzanne, Mike, and Joey, thank you so much for always supporting Family Day and me as well. Uh, the contribution to Family Day helps us a lot, and I am extremely grateful. Looking forward to next year, which is September 22nd, so book us now in your dates. <laughs> Sincerely, Denise Knowles. So September 22nd, 22nd. Okay, family fun day. I'll put that in the donation pile as well. So I'm going to sit with Caroline soon to go through that list and make a hopefully before Saturday to make a determination. Yeah, All your donations are right here. Yes, thank you. Sorry, family fun day 922nd, 922nd? 922. Mm -hmm. How did it get to be 1918? It just oops. Not here yet. Yeah. Uh, this is the land use change we were just talking about. Um, yes, yeah, so we will make that determination next week. Okay. And hopefully I will yeah, remind Mike hasn't Michael been to here for either one of these. Pardon? Michael isn't there for either one of the conversations. No, he's been sick. Oh, Poor guy. He's been sick. Um, uh, we have won a magnificent victory, victory in keeping the Ports of the Naval Shipyard open. This is from um, Seacoast Shipyard Association, um, Chair with John Joyle. Um, battle is not over. Um, gold standard for submarine work. Um, and then this is the annual report that they send to us. Um, the shipyard employs 64 residents, contributing uh, an annual payroll of $4.7 um, the amount of financial support from the organization, um, and just gives the breakdown of per town and state. We normally send them hundred dollars. What's not clear to me is if we've done that already or not. I know the letters here asking for it. Oh, so perhaps we have not then. All right. So what I will, what I'll do is I'll add that to just to the list of, you know, requested disbursements or something. August 31st, um, or 30th, on behalf of the shipyard, I'd like to thank the town of Rollinsburg for its generous contribution of $100 to help support the efforts to preserve oh, so and enhance our region's resources. What, what was the date on that? August. Okay, so I guess we did. So, all right. Again, thank you for your membership. So, we'll make sure we send that off. Yeah, so we'll know. It, it'll, it's, it must be in the quarter three report, actually. So, and then this is just by town. I just wanted to keep up the plot on Baltimore. Pretty interesting read. Mm -hmm. I'm reading that every year. Uh, public, public notes. Current to RSA 228-99 and RSA 240. 
Executive Counselor Russell Prescott and the New Hampshire Department of Transportation on behalf of the Governor's Advisory Commission and Intermodal Transportation, the GACIT. IT. Intermodal. What did I say? Oh, sorry. Um, they call it a... Gasset. Gasset? Gasset. <laughs> they call it. Uh, I'm it? almost embarrassed to, to say that I know these things. <laughs> it's just like they throw out these acronyms. Gasset. In my line of work, I always ask for a vowel. It makes it much easier, doesn't it? <laughs> Which is composed of five executive counselors and commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Now it's a public meeting to be held a review um, to receive input on the toll increase proposal for the New Hampshire Turnpike. Mm. Proposed meeting to receive public input is the meeting will be held at Portsmouth Library, meeting room 175, uh, Portsmouth, on Monday, December 4th. At 5.30. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. It was a total, a potential total increase on the, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they yeah. would. Um, 25 in Georgia and 50 in Hampton. How much in here? 50. 50 cents. Above and beyond. It's already 50 cents in here. No. No. They want to raise it to 50. It's two dollars. Two That's the yeah. increase. The oh, I see. I, I use my thingy. I, I never know. Yeah. Okay. I say move the Rochester one to ninety-eight, not eighty-nine. Put them on the <laughs> I don't think they'll go for that though. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we've missed it. So we've missed it. I hope you put your input in. I'm sure it was all over the news anyway. So. All right. Looks like Divine Miller. This is you. This is bonding. So this is our copy. So our bond attorney, our bond counsel, wrote to the treasurer of the state of New Hampshire to let them know that we were being issued a bond to the amount of $350,808. So, uh, I don't know why the treasurer of the state of New Hampshire needs to know, but, you know, we report to the state, so it's fine. It's what we did. It's correct. Okay, this is the water violation from last week, and I, was, I can't read like your writing. writing. Yeah, let's see if I can. Oh, please verify that uh, water sewer will be posting as required. Tom Clark is trying to reach that. Okay, so I may not have posted yet. But we, you know, we just are going to do it. Okay. So we, we had a letter last week uh, that talked about a violation at the Water and Sewer District and the post, but we were just, we're not the people who, who are supposed to post. So it was an FYI to us. Mm -hmm. So we were asking uh, Tom to check in with, make sure that they have posted it, which is about all that we can do, really. They're their own governing body. This is from last week, too. Notice a public meeting for the Shefford County Delegation of the yes. Committee this Friday, uh, 8, 8, uh, December 8th at 9 a.m. Um, in the Cafe Conference Room, lower level of the Justice Administration Building on County Farm Road. So. for the cans. Um, this was in my folder last week. Um, so I wanted to make sure that they were ordered. I believe George so took care of it. So they're now ordered. Um, because since it was sitting here, I was worried that it wasn't going to no, uh, be on your... We actually did a... Did we do a 
We did a purchase order. Right, but we still have to sign the contract. Without signing the contract, they're not going to order anything. And so we signed it, and then it sat in the folder. So Atlantic never ordered them. I think I think George took care of it. He, he took care of it this week because I sent out the email okay. last week right. after seeing so, it in my folder last week. So let's just say, please put with PO, please put in the folder with PO. So it's not straight. Welcome to Sticker World. <laughs> uh, this is also from last week, the Stratford Metro Planning Organization uh, taking your comments up until December 14th and the public hearing is December 15th at the Rochester Community Center, room 1A. I see that from all the place. That was last week. So this is the plan, which somewhere buried in here is probably our, you know, calming, our, our request to put traffic calming devices on Portland Avenue. If they have all of the project, or these could just be the ones that, um, you know, the past. I don't really know without looking at it, but in any event, we were sort of at the bottom of the list. I think we just file this. In what? Caroline will figure it out. In the new organized room. How's that coming? Well, it's not. Oh. At the moment was totally lost. You broke it. The you board board proved it, but, but it was a was it was late, and so Caroline Caroline said there just wasn't sufficient time to manage that. So okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, this is the. It could old be an earlier one, in which case I would just toss that. You want this tossed because we're waiting for the new one. Yeah, this is the old one. Yeah. Um, one that they were going to send to us. Which is, I think, the next. You've already mentioned the the Lamprey. the uh, Lamprey Regional. Uh, the Budget Committee is meeting again this week on Wednesday to review cemetery wreck. Wreck. Oh yeah, I'll be there too. Cemetery wreck and water and sewer. Yeah, forgot all about it. And on Thursday at the Rollinsford Public Library at four o'clock, the Stratford Regional Planning Commission holds will be holding its quarterly meeting here in Bronsford. And the topic is sustainable agriculture. And Phil Brand will be there as one of the panelists from Brandmore Farm. And the public is invited to attend, 4 o'clock, Bronsford Public Library. Probably the meeting room, I suspect, which is down in the, in the lower mill right off of the library. I think that that's it. So we'll ask for community input. We don't have any. Um, there's no non-public, right? That you're aware of. Nope. Okay. Community input. Is it really four o'clock on Thursday? Yes. It's Why are you asking? Because that's the normal story time for the kids at the Ballinsford Library. So uh, I guess I'll be contacting the library to find out if they'll be holding story time this week. That might be a good thing to do because <laughs> the, the information is all out on the Traffic Regional Planning Commission. So. Well, there's plenty of room. Yeah. We usually do a story. The volume. <laughs> <laughs> we usually do a story in a craft. So. I'm Probably sure that rolling. somebody is managing the space. I mean, there's the big community room. Yeah. So I suspect that that's where SRPC is meeting, just because there are you know, like 20 commissioners. So. Yeah. And to say nothing of general public. So. I just need to make sure I keep my kids out of there if there's a meeting going on. 
All right. Anything else? All right. Uh, uh, yes. Me. Um, Jody, when you were speaking about the basketball, you were saying the twenty dollars covered the refs and the gym time. There's no gym time fee. Um, that is free um, for use. But it, what 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 it, what it will do is free up time for the the boys will have more time, so they're not going to be having to share any the gym time. Um, and then the the refs have to be paid, and so mm -hmm. they get. Um, Kelly said anywhere between twenty and forty bucks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a game. stipend. Yeah, and so um, they the rec committee came up with a twenty dollar fee for to play. So. All right, because when you had said it, you had said in gym time, so I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I just I I didn't just think just relieve gym time. I yeah. Because in the winter time, gym time's hard to get. So. All right, yes, Mr. Charlie. I got a follow up. That's third and fourth. What is there for the fifth and sixth grades? Kelly didn't mention anything about yeah. um, fifth and sixth and that there was an issue with them. So. Okay. All right. Anything else? Shall we adjourn, Jody? Motion to adjourn. By consensus. Okay. Thank you.